everyone. Welcome to my November wrap-up video. Um, I have a little bit of a sore throat. It's Thanksgiving morning and I work tonight, so let's just get through this. Um, normally I split up my wrap-ups more by genre, but this month I realized I only read YA fantasy. So I'm kind of got it organized from least to most favorite-ish. I read quite a few books that I didn't like this month and then some that I really loved. So it's not in an exact order, but that's kind of how I've got it split up. So let's jump into it. The first book I want to talk about this month is Girls Made of Snow and Glass. Um, this book, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. Um, I think it was Normally I'm like, this book is way too long and I've got some that I'm going to talk about that I was like, this was way too long. Um, but this was a book that I actually thought was too short. Um, it's only like 300 something pages. The font is fairly large. And I think if it had been longer, we could have jumped more into the characters and their motivations um, and their inner thoughts. Um, and also I think it could have benefited from more world building. I don't know it just wasn't really engaging to me um if you aren't a huge fantasy fan but you want to read like a little fantasy i think this would probably be enjoyable for you it does have some good lgbt representation um but i didn't i didn't really enjoy this book i'm yeah i don't really highly recommend it to anyone the next book that i have that i want to talk about is tower of dawn by sarah j mass um, this book was massively disappointing to me. I felt like it was way too long. The romances in this book also made me really frustrated. Um, if you don't want it spoiled, I'll put the book down for like relationship spoilers and I'll pick it back up when I'm done with the spoiler part. Um, so she had characters, um, what are their names even? Nethrin and Kale, I'm gonna say these names wrong, whatever, um, that had been together at the, <clears throat> oh my god, excuse me, had been together at the start of the book and had been together in the previous book, and I thought that those two characters were a good pair for each other, and then at the start of this book, they end up, like, falling apart, and it's not really, I don't know, I don't think she really explored why their relationship didn't work out, it was just kind of like, oh, things are hard, so we're just gonna break up, um, and then, like, the book takes place over a six-week period, and the healer that Kale meets at the beginning of the book, he ends up married to at the end of the book. And it's like, wait a minute, at the beginning, you had been dating someone else. You were in a serious relationship with somebody else. You just met this other person, and then six weeks later, you've broken up with this other person and married another person. I found it frustrating. I think it was Sarah J's Mass's way of trying to be realistic and not having her... Like, I think in some ways, Sarah J. Mass's relationships, my sweet dog keeps jingling her collar in the background. Sit down. It's okay. But I think Sarah J. Mass, in some ways, it's like realistic that she doesn't have like her pairings. The person that they're with at the beginning might not be the person they like stay with. And I think that is good because like, obviously not all relationships last forever. But in this circumstance, I just found it annoying. Coco, what are you doing, baby? Um, and then also this book has, like, it's, Kale goes to this place to get his spine healed, and that was just super frustrating for, like, boring to read. I actually have a sticky note. I'm gonna read, like, an excerpt of one of those scenes, because it's so obviously, like, the magic, it's made, it's made up. Like, Sarah J. Mass came up with this on her own. Um, and she tried to give it like way too much detail and I think this would have been better as like a softer magic system instead of her trying to explain everything completely. Like I sticky noted something here at the end because I was just so fed up at this point because this book is, this book is so long. This is like what? Okay, these last pages aren't. Um, 664 pages. Coco, buddy, you gotta sit down. You're making too much noise. There you go. This book is 664 pages um, and it doesn't need to be that long and a good chunk of it is BS like this. <clears throat> it was like applying a patch over a knife wound to the gut. He had not healed, unmoored and raging. He had not wanted to heal. 
Also, every sentence is a new line. Not really. His body, yes, but even that. Some part of him had whispered it was deserved, and the soul wound. He had been content to let it fester. Failure and liar and oath breaker. The darkness swarmed, a wind stirring it. He could stay here forever in the ageless dark. Yes, the darkness whispered. He could remain in rage and hate and curl into nothing but shadow. But Dorian remained before him, still smiling faintly, waiting, waiting for him. He had made one promise. He had promised. He had not broken it yet to save them, his friend, his kingdom. He still had that. Even here at the bottom of this dark hell, he still had that. That whole thing, I mean, that's like a whole page because every sentence is its own line. It's supposed to be about, um, oh my God, what's her name? I Irene? Is that how you say it? Irene? Anyway, it's about her healing his back and it just like goes on and on and on like that, trying to describe like this dark magic that's in his spine. And it's like, you didn't have to do that. It's not exciting to read. I don't care. Honestly. So anyway, I didn't like this book. Uh, next I have is A Court of Wings and Ruin. Wait, actually. Yeah, so Court of Mist and Fury is the second one in this, uh, in the Accor Court of Thorn and Roses series. Um, I know I didn't like this book, but honestly, at this point, I can't even remember, remember why I didn't like it because I also read the third book this month, and that's what I remember more. I know I didn't like this one, though, either. I think I only gave it three stars. Um... But Court of Wings and Ruin, I gave, I really didn't like. My Goodreads review, I actually left for it at 3 in the morning after a few too many glasses of wine. It's the shortest book review I've ever written, and I think it's probably the most savage as well. Um, one thing that I, has frustrated me about this entire series that I mentioned in my review is The Cauldron. And in this magical universe. Everything has been created by a cauldron. I'm not kidding. And it's like this all-powerful force that plays a really big role in the series, but it's so hard for me to read about like they're looking for the cauldron and the cauldron's powerful and like they're afraid of the cauldron and blah, blah. it's a pot. Okay? Do you know how boring that is to read about? I don't understand why she had to make it a cauldron. Like of all inanimate objects. Why? Um, so that was dumb and annoying. Um, also, I just, I still don't really like the characters in this series. I think I mentioned that was A Court of Thorn and Roses when I did that in one of my wrap-up videos. Just not that great. I don't really recommend this series. Like, it was fine. I'm not too mad that I read it. But it's not a great series. I wouldn't be like, oh my god, you have to read the Court of Thorn and Roses series. So, A Gathering of Shadows, I actually didn't really enjoy. I... To me, it seemed like the first half probably could have been, like, mushed onto the first book. That's my cat. I felt like the first half could have been mushed onto the first book, and the second half probably could have been mushed onto the third book. Because with this being, like, its own whole novel, it just, it didn't feel like enough was happening. I really wanted to talk more about, oh, Osirin? What is his name? The bad guy. In any case, whatever his name is, I wanted to get more information about him. I felt like that was too scattered in to talking about the magical competition, which I also can't remember the name of. Whoops. Um, but anyway, I there just wasn't enough going on in this book for me. It was fine. I don't have any big complaints about it, just that it, to me, was the slowest book in the trilogy and I wanted it to move on quicker and talk about bigger plot points. And then the last book in the Shades of Magic trilogy, um, A Conjuring of Light. I did really like this book. Um, I think it tied up the trilogy so well. The ending, I thought, was just, to me, the ending was just perfect. Um, and that everything was resolved enough for the characters that I was satisfied with the ending, but still, like, set up new adventures for them and that I would be more than happy to read more from this series and I think that's always really hard to do um to write an ending that's enough to that you're okay with it ending but an open-ended enough that you want more and I think having an ending where you still want more I, I like endings like that I don't want everything to be tied up so nicely that I'm like okay I would never read anything else about this series because I think at that point you're a little disinterested in it um 
So I really, I applaud um, Schwab for that. That was good. And then I want to talk about The Told by Neil Schusterman, the conclusion to the uh, Arc of the Scythe trilogy. This book was so good. I had liked the first two books. Uh, um, I really liked this book. Again, I thought the ending was really great. Um, it went places that I did not expect, that I didn't see coming, and so that's always really fun. Um, and if you like sci-fi, please read this trilogy. It's so good. It's so interesting. I think it asks a lot of like big questions, but it's like a fun book to read, fun series to read. Um, and I love the characters and it was just really good. I was glad I read this series and I was glad I read this book after many of the disappointing reads that I've had this month. And then, so it's not really the end of the month yet, but I'm just going to like mention this book here because I think I'll finish it before December, um, is Kingdom of Ash, the last book in the Throne of Glass series. So far, I'm really enjoying it. I am on page 279. There are 980 pages in this book. Um, but I'm really liking where things are going so far. It's been, it hasn't been like a, a difficult read. And these are characters that I like obviously know and love. What is this, like the seventh book in the series? Um, so I'm like very familiar with the world. And this series, I think, is so much better than the Court of Thorn and Roses series. Um, like, I don't have any big complaints about this. I have so many big complaints about the Court of Thorn and Roses series. Yeah. So that's that. That's going to be my last book for November. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully starting next month. These were just a bunch of series that I was trying to get through. Like, I wanted to finish the Throne of Glass before, Throne of Glass and A Court of Thorn and Roses. I really wanted to finish before the end of the year. Um, but hopefully next month when I'm not trying to finish off all these YA series, I'll be able to go back to reading a wider variety of books. That's kind of what I've got lined up on my my um, like TBR shelves right now or more more of a variety of books like I like to read. Um, but thank you for watching. Sorry if this video wasn't as good as my normal ones. I'm a little under the weather today, but I wanted to film because my roommate is out of town and I am not going to film with her in the house. So I have to just do it whenever she's gone. Um, thanks for watching everyone. Bye.